So this new EP that you've just put out, it is Butter Miracle Suite 1. This marks the end of a, is it your longest hiatus in songwriting, would you say? Uh, oh yeah, probably. I mean, I've never been a particularly consistent writer. I've always written in bursts. So it wasn't that different in a way, because I've never been one of the guys who writes every week and, and then just compiles at the end for a record. I, I would, because I, can't, I play piano, not guitar. So when I'm on tour, I'm always going two years without writing because I can't bring a keyboard into my hotel room every night. So, uh, so I would always take breaks. But yeah, this is probably the longest, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously you're very well known for your storytelling and, you know, almost poetic lyrics. So you're saying that when you write songs, you, you wait until you're in that kind of frame of mind. Do you have like a backlog of stories that you kind of store until you're ready to write? No, I never even think about it. Uh, I never start writing with a story in my mind. I just start writing songs and they come out. And then I, when I see where they're going, I point them in that direction and flesh them out. But no, I never think about songs ahead of time. We make records because I start writing. It's okay. always been that way. Every time we get off tour, I'm home for a little bit, and then I start writing, and then we run into the studio, and I keep writing in the studio. And you know, I write about a third to a half of every record while we're already in the studio, generally. Um, Long December, Hard Candy, Richard Manuel is Dead. Uh, those are all written in the studio. Monkey, uh, I, could, I, mean, I could go on and on. It's, it's a good half of most records. Obviously, you guys have been around as a band for 30 years now. If you ever meet somebody that doesn't know who Count and Crows are, how do you sum up the kind of music that you play? And is oh. there one song that you would play them that represent you feel represents your band, or is them a song you're most proud of? Oh, I mean, I've met a lot of people who don't know our band, it's, especially nowadays. It's not like we're we're not where we were, obviously. Um, especially kids. There's plenty of kids who don't know our band. Um, I guess. Uh, I would think Round Here is the most representative song. I would think Palisades Park is the one I'm most proud of, previous to this record. And I would think the most recognizable is probably Mr. Jones. Um, yeah. Those three, you know, those, uh, I'm not sure which one of those things you want. Like Mr. Jones, clearly the most famous. If I was trying to show someone what the band's really all about, Round Here, my proudest moment, probably Palisades Park, until this record, you know. And I know you're a big fan of kind of discovering new music. How do you how do you find new music these days? Well, um, I mean, I'm kind of a music. I'm obsessed with music. It's like I, I, we have a festival for one thing, so we're always looking for bands that play to play Underwater Sunshine. So yeah. I look on all the places where they have those sort of band, uh, like uh, Wild Honey in is the one in New York, and the Chicago has that one. Uh, so I watch those to discover new bands, see who's good. Uh, I, I listen probably more to Pandora than I do to uh, Spotify. I love Spotify for what it gets you, but you can't, it's great to get anything you want, but there's no way to know you want something you haven't heard yet. So yeah. Pandora, I've built over the years, several radio stations of my own with, by combining bands. Nice. Uh, and I listen to that a lot and they'll play me all kinds of stuff that I've never heard before. Um, and yeah, and also with, with uh, six or seven other people contributing at the festival, Everyone's always suggesting new music, and so I get a lot of it there too. Um, uh, I guess I, I and I too tend to read about stuff, and I have people on Twitter and Instagram, other musicians that I follow who are always talking about their friends. Um, it's a variety of different ways. You just kind of you know, it's it's all about being in a constant state of obsessively looking for new music. Yeah, because you know, know how that feels. Is there anybody you discovered recently that that you're particularly excited about? Well, I think that. Um, I think Gang of Youths, the Australian band, probably the best rock and roll band in the world. I mean, they live in London now, but they're incredible. Uh, Sunflower Bean is a great band, New York band. They're fantastic. You know, uh, Sean Barna, Matt Susich, they're really great. Uh, uh, Pedal is fantastic. Um, God, there's so many. Oh, Hopalong. Francis Quinlan is an amazing writer. That band, Hopalong is, they remind me like of this cross between they sound like throwing muses sometimes, but they also have like 
they don't sound like talking heads, but they have what talking heads had, which is like a completely unique angular sound that seems really abstract, the songs, but if you kind of tilt your head the right way, it actually makes perfect sense. Yeah. And as a singer, she's an astonishing singer. The way she like pushes her voice to her falsetto almost like seems like it's feathering apart. So many great bands right now. I, I feel bad because at the moment I start listing them, all I think about is the ones I'm going to forget. And that's part of the, part of the curse in a way. There's, you know, we're open to so much new music these days that you always feel like you're missing out on something. So you're always just going more and more down the rabbit hole, right? Yeah, and I, but it, it reminds me of doing thank yous on records. They're less about thanking people and more about the terror of the person you inevitably forget. And who is it going to be this time? Like, it's always one of your best friends or mom, sorry. You know, like, it becomes such a stress thing doing thank yous because of that. I, I just realized the same thing just now. I, I have so many friends who are making such great music right now. You know, we're taking uh, Sean Barna and Matt Susich out. They're going to flip-flop for the first part of the tour. They're both incredible songwriters. Um, Matt is this a classic New York songwriter. He make, reminds me a lot of Paul Simon in some ways. He's just got that classic troubadour New York thing. And Sean uh, is this brilliant, like... The life as a gay man in America and his sort of like, it, it reminds me of the, uh, he reminds me too of like Lou Reed or Mata Hoople describing the, the factory days, the, creating a world like that there, you know, and he's just brilliant. It's, um, they're both incredible guys. And Frank Turner is going to do the other parts of the tour. He was going to do the whole tour uh, last year and we were going to do it, but of course nothing happened last year. And he's got something going on for the first month of it this year. So he's going to come out for the end and play the festival as well. Thanks for spending some time talking to me today. And um, good luck with this new EP. And hopefully Sweet 2, whenever that comes. It's coming. I'm almost, I'm going to finish writing it in the next month or so, I think. Okay, great. We look forward to that as well then. So thanks, enjoy man. the rest of your day. And thanks again, Adam. You too. Bye-bye.